President Obama's trade agenda was given a new jolt of life yesterday as the House voted to give him the fast track authority to finish his broad Trans Pacific Partnership Agreement. I'm sure you know what that means, but it's not all smooth sailing, and the bill still faces a blockade of Senate Democrats that can stop it in its tracks. Joining me now is Politico's Lauren French, who's been following all the drama on Capitol Hill. Lauren, welcome. Thanks for having me, Luke. So, Lauren, this is extremely confusing. The general public literally has no idea what's being discussed because most congressional reporters don't have any idea what's being discussed. And you have to consistently remind yourself that TAA stands for Trade Adjustment Assistance, TPA, Trans, uh, uh, Trade Promotion Authority, and TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership. I like yep. to say that TAA plus TPA equals TPP question mark. Where do we stand now? It's out of the House. They got it through with 218 votes. Now it's over in the Senate, but it does not have the TAA, that adjustment assistance that a lot of Democrats want. The president said he has wanted that helps those disenfranchised workers who would lose their jobs due to trade deals. How is it going to move over there? So that's the big question right now. You have a number of Senate Democrats who are really not sure they want to again vote on TPA and TAA, Trade Adjustment Assistance and the uh, Fast Track Authority. So right now you see a lot of pressure on these senators. Unions don't want this to go forward, so they're pressuring senators to vote no on the Trade Adjustment Assistance issue. So they're trying to work out in what way do we package this so it can get through so we can send it back to the House. It's been a procedural mess which doesn't at all really resonate with Americans about, you know, rules, votes, and how you pass it to pass it to the House of the Senate to get to the President's desk. But right now the big hiccup is well, how the Senate does act. And they left town right after the House passed it pass the bill. So that's really going to be the dominating conversation for the weekend with Mitch McConnell is how does he go forward to ensure there's enough Democratic support to, uh, to pass a trade adjustment assistance bill and then that could go eventually to the president's desk. And they're going to need about between six to eight Democrats to break that Correct. filibuster. They got 14 Democrats supporting uh, TPA originally, but it was mm -hmm attached to TAA. It had that adjustment assistance for those disenfranchised workers. I'm interested to see if President Obama can do the full court press because he's really going to have to work hard to find those Senate Democrats because at least on this vote, they're going to go on a leap of faith that eventually that adjustment assistance will come after this vote, more likely than not. Do you think he's capable of pulling that off? And do you think McConnell and, and Reid can pull that off? It's so tough to say. You saw President Obama come to the Congress last week to try to woo House Democrats, and it really didn't work. That was a disaster. He it was a disaster. He came too late. Nancy Pelosi eventually voted against him. Uh, other Democratic allies did. Now he has slightly closer relationships with senators because he used to serve in the upper chamber than he does at the House. And House members have griped for years that he doesn't pay attention to them. But turning enough Democrats to really put TPA forward when there is no TAA, that trade adjustment assistance attached, is going to be a really tough sell. And right now what you're looking at is Democrats possibly putting really the closing, the finishing touches on the Obama presidency. If he can't get it done, that shows a lot about his influence up on Capitol Hill. And I think that's a very good point because a lot of people declared the Obama presidency dead last Friday when Nancy <laughs> Pelosi publicly went against him. It was striking. None of us had ever seen anything like that. I don't think Nancy no. Pelosi quite knew what she was doing. She did not bring herself to say that she was opposing him until the very end of her speech. And even then it was hard for her to get out the mm -hmm. words. But all that being said, this is sort of, I would say, parliamentary judicu that's going on on Capitol Hill. Do you think that we perhaps buried the Obama presidency a little early last week? I mean, if they pull this off, it would be quite extraordinary because the role of labor here has been unbelievable. They were on the Hill yesterday. They were here at the Hill last week. This is like the last fight that labor really has. It's sort of like they want to die on this Hill because if they can't stop this, they really show a weakness. So to me, this is an incredible thing because it's either the end of the Obama presidency legislatively or it's the end of strong labor and at least how it relates to Capitol Hill. Which is fascinating. You never thought you would see President Barack Obama facing off against the AFL-CIO and other <laughs> unions in a death fight for their legacy. I mean, if you would have predicted this six months ago, it would have been so hard to see. But that's exactly what's happening. Unions are making this a litmus test for president or not presidential candidates, for congressional candidates. They are definitely going to bring this up. They're watching Hillary Clinton close when it does come to presidential politics. But yes, you either have Obama succeeding with really what is the top tier of his second term domestic agenda 
for labor succeeding, which was they've made a big issue and put millions of dollars into defeating. So whether or not who can convince the most Democratic senators really will come out as the winner, and whoever doesn't is going to see a very stunning lack of power and lack of mm -hmm. influence on Capitol Hill that will reverberate if it's for Obama, at least until the end of his presidency. If it's for labor, I think it could last much longer. And it's a wonky story, but it is fascinating. Interesting bedfellows, Boehner and McConnell and Obama together opposing Pelosi. Hillary Clinton doesn't want to take a stand on the issue. Bernie mm -hmm. Sanders is using it to fundraise. So much 2016, so much Hill intrigue. We just wish it was not impossible to explain on television. You guys do a great job in print on it, though. Politico's Lauren we French. We have more words. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. Take care, my friend.